Welcome to the Raw Food Health Empowerment Podcast. I'm your host, Samantha Salmon, Certified Integrative Nutrition Coach and Brain Health Licensed Trainer. And today we are talking about raw foods and regularity, ensuring smooth bowel movements. And I want to point you to a resource on rawfoodmealplanner.com. It's a checklist to uh, with information to help you diversify your gut microbiome because a diversified gut means a healthy gut, which means a healthy, happy brain, okay? So we're gonna dig into it. And part of that is really connected to your bowel movements. Now, one of the most popular videos on my YouTube channel is about constipation and bowel movements. A lot of folks tend to be really constipated. And even if you're dealing with diarrhea, that can also be a sign of constipation because you're so backed up, there's like a slingshot effect. And that's basically what the diarrhea is manifesting. And so this is not comfortable, right? We don't wanna have to be dealing with this. I will address some questions around this. Raw foods, regularity, and ensuring smooth bowel movements. Now for me personally, I can sum this up real quick for you in the basically the foundation of raw foods and what I really like about it. Raw foods are rich in water, fiber, and nutrients, okay? Nutrients is what our body is running on, right? This body needs fuel just like a car needs fuel to drive. The body needs fuel, and that's the nutrients from the food. Whole foods, fiber-rich foods have those nutrients, okay? That's number one. Two, the fiber. Fiber keeps the colon clean right? This is not new information. Fiber keeps the colon clean, okay? What does not have fiber? Meat, dairy, eggs, right? So if your diet is primarily of meat, dairy, eggs, you have no fiber, very limited amounts of fiber, in which case you are creating an environment for colon cancer or anything else. (laughs) There's a ton of things. Right now, we're just talking about the digestive system, but we could talk about how that's impacting your brain health, how that's impacting your cardiovascular health, how that's impacting your hormonal balance. We could talk about all of that, but we're not talking about that today. We're specifically talking about bowel movements and digestion, right? And in order to have healthy digestion and healthy bowel movements, you need a clean colon. Right, and so the way to do that is with raw foods, nutrient-rich foods to give your body what it needs, right? The body needs nutrients in order for it to function properly. So when you eat food and that food gets turned into, it's basically information for the body, it gets turned into what the body needs to make all sorts of mechanisms happen that happen where we don't even have to think about it. We don't feel it. We don't feel what our kidneys are doing to process our food right now, what our liver is doing, what our gallbladder is doing, all sorts of things, right? As I talk right now, uh, saliva is being formed. I'm swallowing it. It's going down into my esophagus. The stomach has digestive acid, gastric juices, right? So when I eat food, that stuff goes down in there. Food goes into the small intestine, right? And nutrients are being extrapolated from that, right? (laughs) There's a whole bunch, it's a whole factory line of things that are happening. When food goes in and it comes out the other end and it's supposed to be packaged properly, right? Packaged properly means your urine comes out in the front, the water comes out in the front and not through the back. If water's coming out in the back, that's diarrhea, that's no good. All right, and that diarrhea could be a symptom of a lot of things. Foundationally, you're eating something that is uh, triggering to your gut, right? Your gut doesn't like it, the body doesn't like it, right? So we have to find out what those foods are that's causing this so we can stop that. Good packaging that's coming out the back means the bowels are looking a certain way, right? In terms of color, in terms of shape, In terms of form, you don't want it too soft, right? That's diarrhea. You don't want it too hard where it's like rocks coming out, right? You're impacted at that point. And so you need to loosen the stool. And for some people, it could get really bad where they're so backed up, it's so impacted because they've been eating a lot of processed foods, not drinking water, drinking soda, right? Which is just sugar. And so it it becomes basically a cesspool for toxins, right? Because this is your elimination channel to release toxins out of the body. And so if you're backed up here, 
now again a whole series of things could happen from there a potential for colon cancer for hormonal dysregulation right again mood disturbances folks being aggressive and irritable and things like this why because they're backed up right if you if you don't have healthy digestion you don't have a healthy gut you don't have a healthy brain which means irritation anger saying things and doing things that you will regret later right that don't show you in a good light right it's not who you want to be and how you want to show up in the world why because the prefrontal cortex right here the ceo of your brain is what's really making these decisions on what you do and what you don't do, right? Because a lot of us, all of us, we have thoughts, but we don't all follow through on all of our thoughts. Why? Because some of these thoughts will lead us into areas we don't want to be. <laughs> so we make conscious, wise choices based on the health of this part of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, right? There's other parts of the brain that of course are very important, right? The basal ganglia, when we talk about anxiety, depression, low mood, that type of thing, the basal ganglia is basically where we wanna focus on with nurturing that. But in terms of decision-making and how we're treating other people and things like this, it's right up here, the prefrontal cortex, right? So we want a healthy digestion for that including just a healthy body and making sure that our, our body's working properly. Now, in terms of raw foods versus cooked foods and the digestive process is really all about the enzymes, right? Like I said, there's this book, Becoming Raw, where Brenda Davis and her co-writer, they flesh into, flesh out and go into the studies on this whole conversation around enzymes, right? In the raw food space we say that raw foods have enzymes and this makes it easier to digest for the body and this is why we have so much energy as opposed to eating cooked food because when you eat cooked food the body has to use so much energy to digest that food right so then you end up becoming very tired and lethargic right after your lunch or dinner all you want to do is sit down in front of the tv and kind of just veg out right <laughs> because you're tired right because the food was so heavy where raw foods you're not really going to have that experience maybe if you eat a lot of nuts and seeds and dehydrated foods um but even that it's a very different experience but you don't really get that from there. Now, in terms of the debate on enzymes, so clearly from a subjective perspective, right? Or anecdotal, there's anecdotal and then there's evidence-based. Evidence-based, the medical system, they like to look to research and peer-reviewed studies to back up things because I think it's really, it has to do a lot with, there's a lot of skeptical people and which makes sense, right? We need to be discerning in all things. That's the, that's a wise mind, right? To be discerning. At the same time, for me personally, I'm going to talk about myself. I was convinced from the very beginning about the concept of fiber versus meat for the human body when it was explained to me the difference between a carnivore and a human is the length of our intestines. That's one difference out of a list of many, but this one was really impactful for me. And I'll go through the rest, right? The length of our intestines. So we have long intestines and it's very windy like this. If you're eating something like meat, dairy, eggs, and th these things are getting stuck in the crevices of the colon, and they're calcifying and getting hard, and that's what's manifesting into cancer. At this time, when I'm learning this, it's, it's 2008. Cancer was the biggest scare for everybody at that point from a health perspective. And this may, and, and then the, the person that explained this was, it was a YouTube video I was watching of this. I think he was a anthropologist. I feel like he was looking at animals, he, and, but he was making this different, differentiation this discernment and i'm not sure what the full scope of that video was i just remember this piece because it landed so heavy for me he talked about a lion for example who is a carnivore how are we different from a lion who is a carnivore first of all a lion 
does not see color, okay? They don't see color. We see color, why? Why do we see color? Our eyesight actually triggers even biological responses. So for example, I see a mango, especially as a Jamaican American, right? I see a mango, I start to salivate, okay? No food has touched my mouth, but I just see that mango. I start to salivate. The digestive process has already started from sight. And I'm attracted to that mango because of the color, and I can see color. God in his infinite wisdom made it. This is part of our innate makeup, right? The animals in the wild don't question what kind of diet they should be eating. And ultimately, we shouldn't either because our eyes <laughs> are telling us if I'm seeing a mango and I'm already salivating, right? There you go. I would never see an animal in the wild and start to salivate, right? Even a chicken, even a cow or, you know, whatever they use to make burgers these days because now they're, they're coming up with crickets and all sorts of stuff because, you know, our food system. But we are naturally attracted to color, to fruit, right? <laughs> and this is our diet. This is our diet. This is for us. So that's number one, the color. A lion in the wild has canines. I used to always say, oh, but I have canines, like right here, right? But this is nothing compared to a lion. A lion's canines, the point of that is because he can eat meat raw, right? He goes up to another animal and uh, he just puts his teeth right into the flesh of that animal. The blood and everything is good for its body. It's not gonna die, it's not gonna get sick. It eats raw blood, it eats raw flesh and thrives. Now we have cases of human populations who have tried this. They have not lived long because it's toxic to our body to eat raw flesh and raw blood. It is toxic to us, right? So we die early, okay? So there's the teeth. Then the intestines for a lion is very short. It eats that meat, it goes in, it goes out. And it's not windy, it's pretty straight. So you don't see a lion really suffering from colon cancer, right? But we have high rates of colon cancer, right? <laughs> because we're eating foods that are not in alignment with our diet. Now, a great book I would recommend is Dr. Doug Graham's 801010 because he has a chart in his book that goes into even more detail than this. But I think these are like the primaries for me that really land so heavily for me that I'm just like, why would anybody think that we should ever eat an animal? But I could see in the beginning, folks discover fire, they experiment, they burn. Because at that point, there were cannibals. There are a lot more cannibals on the earth, I feel, I'm sure, <laughs> than now. And people have experimented with different things, but at least we know now from so many millennia of folks living what works what doesn't work right cannibalism in the human population doesn't work because we get sick it's the blood and everything toxifies our body right it toxifies us <laughs> if that's not a word i just made it a word it toxifies us all right so what specific raw foods are particularly beneficial in maintaining regularity and why? Now, I won't really go into specifics on specific raw foods, but more so groups of foods, right? So we're talking, like I said, water-rich, fiber-rich, nutrient-dense. Okay, all the raw foods are nutrient-dense and are fiber-rich, but not all of them are water-rich, and that's what we're looking for, right? So the water-rich raw foods that's gonna be your vegetables, like your leafy greens and your fruits, okay? This is what's gonna clean you out and keep you regular. And the best way to do this, to not have digestive upset, is really focus on your fruits early in the morning and have your salads and your leafy greens later in the day, lunch, dinner. And that's gonna help you get the bulk, the fiber you need to bulk up your stool and the water that you need to make sure everything is flushing out properly, not getting stuck, nothing is getting uh, too dry and too hard. So you're having an easy bowel movement and a consistent one, right? Some people, as long as they're having a bowel movement once a day, I believe that could be sufficient. It really depends on what you're eating, right? If you're doing a lot of 
juices and smoothies or even more so juices or drinking lots of water and not many meals, not much fiber and how things are moving through, right? There's, I forget the term of it, but there's a, a term for like how long it takes something to, to, to run through your digestive process from the moment you consume it. And you could test that with activated charcoal, um, even probably with beets, but I feel like beets runs through faster, but maybe different people have a different experience with that. But yeah, that's, what is that called? Gut motility, basically. Like how things are passing through. You don't want things to be stuck and staying in, right? If you have charcoal and you don't see it coming out within 24 hours at the other end, do not have any more charcoal, okay? Because this can be pretty dangerous you need to clean out, right? Definitely pay attention to what's going on with your diet. Are you having enough greens, right? Some people may recommend like colonics and things like this. I am not of the mindset of that. It feels extreme. And for some people, they have to go extreme because they've been so extreme with their diet. They're so backed up. And such an, in an emergency situation, colonics and enemas, they have to do it, right? And that, I've seen that really save people. At the same time, for me personally, I'm like, water should not go up the anus. <laughs> it shouldn't be there at all, right? It's supposed to, it's supposed to be like a dry space because I believe God already made the body the way it's supposed to be and run. But if you are for lots of unhealthy, unnatural reasons in a crisis situation, then this is what we have available to us. And so I know that if you end up in the hospital, this is one of the things they're looking to do when you're really super backed up. Now this question, are there any risks or drawbacks to consuming only raw foods in relation to di digestive health and bowel regularity? I won't say that there's a risk, right? I don't have experience with that. I've, I have done 100% raw for a year and did it affect my digestive health in a negative way? No. Again, this is a subjective experience. <laughs> and like I said, everyone's microbiome is as unique as their fingerprint. We're all a unique Petri dish. What makes up my microbiome is the foods I ate during childhood, the perfumes that were sprayed around me during childhood, the environment I live in now, the foods that I consume now, the things I put on my body, the water I drink, the air I breathe, the plants that's around me, right? I moved from LA to Orlando, Florida. The plant life around me is very different. There was a lot of cars and tires and driving and exhaust smells around me a lot. Here in, in Orlando, Florida, that is not the case. So all of that affects my microbiome. Eating 100% raw, affecting your digestive system in a negative light, I've never heard of it. But again, you want to experiment with yourself and give it a try. And don't, I personally don't think you need to be 100% raw, unless you're really in a severe chronic situation, or you just really wanna do it, right? You just really want to, which is totally great and it's awesome, right? There are folks that are thriving on 100% raw. They're doing awesome. You can also thrive on a high raw food diet, right? So to me, in the book that I mentioned by Brenda Davis, Becoming Raw, she says high raw is above 50% raw by weight. <clears throat> I say high raw is 75% or more by calories, right? That's how I've always looked at it. That's how I, from back in the day, the folks that I follow and paid attention to in the early part of my days, that, that was my understanding. And that's been my process, looking at calories because I, I don't own a scale, never own a scale, I'm not weighing anything. But I'm looking at calories where the majority, and to me 75% seems a pretty good majority, of my calories coming from, and that's what's giving me the category of a high raw diet. 
And for me, this is really good because it allows me the flexibility of, for example, I go to Poland, I have a great time. I had some delicious vegan pizza with artichokes and mushrooms and stuff on it, which is delicious. I keep thinking about this place. I had, what did I have? Um, I had all sorts of great stuff. I had a vegan French toast. That was really good where, oh, they, and the French toast, they did it completely different where they used banana bread to make the French toast. So it was like sweet on sweet because they, they put like a syrup on it and they have slices of apple. It was so good, right? So I had an amazing time eating in Poland and I had some great salads also, but I had, I was I'm not in the box of 100% raw. I can eat those cooked foods, enjoy myself, come back to my kitchen and be as raw as I want to be, right? <laughs> I have all my fruits and my avocados and my kale and my Brussels sprouts and all my greens and things here, all my fruits, my nut butters, my vinegars and things, all the things I need to make all the raw food deliciousness here in my kitchen without the pressure of trying to be have fun and enjoy my trip and find satiating food on a budget while traveling right because it's very difficult you can eat raw at home and it will cost you xyz but if you're on the road backpacking you're spending a week or two in a place and then moving on right this it's a lot you have to travel with all your stuff your spices and all your things you have to travel with your blenders although you you may not even have to travel with your blenders you could i didn't but i because i bought smoothies or you can eat whole fruits and stuff like this it's feasible but there are times when it's it's really difficult especially because you're moving around so much and you're having to travel with all these things right when you're home it's a lot easier you have your staple items they're tucked away in the fridge covered whatever you have everything you need your salad spinner like the tools for me the tools are really important because they make the life so much easier the salad spinner the colander to wash things my greens have to be washed okay <laughs> my greens and i like when my salad has texture to it i add texture with seeds you can add with bell peppers i find raw bell peppers hurt uh, hurt my teeth a lot because my teeth are really sensitive that's something i factor in also with the foods i eat and how i eat them right i can have whole fruits for a while until my teeth start to hurt and then I have to be doing a lot of smoothies. Smoothies and juices, fine. The juices aren't necessarily gonna give me satiation later in the day where I need bulk, right? Not necessarily nutrients I'm looking for because the juice will definitely satiate me in terms of a nutrient. Thinking of like in terms of nutrients and you feel like if you're in tune with your body, you know when you're nutrient depleted hungry, right? There's a difference between nutrient hungry and like I need to fill my stomach hungry. And so for that bulk, I like having a nice big salad with texture. So the seeds would do it. Like I said, the bell peppers I tend to not do because that pain on my teeth, even though I really do red bell peppers and orange bell peppers and all the different kinds. So what I typically do is I'll have, I used to back in the day before sweet potato became a concern for me because of the arsenic and lead, I would boil sweet potato, cut it up, add that to my salad. I have a pressure cooker. I use that for beans and I'll add my beans to my salad. And that's like how I get the satiation I need. And, and that bulk I need to just add the fiber because these and and it's way more affordable to do it like I even less imp more important than affordable is the convenience like at home everything is set up in a very easy way for me to put my meals together whereas not being settled and backpacking and traveling to all these different places not having my things makes it harder to do just more of a pain in the butt and more annoying so anyway back to the question of any risks or drawbacks to consuming only raw foods and honestly i cannot think about i can't think of it because i've only had nothing but positive effects from 
having raw foods, especially for my digestive system. And I'm talking specifically up here. Obviously, bowel regularity, I've never been constipating, it's constipated eating raw. I've never had that experience at all. It just seems like a sure-proof way to have bowel regularity. But for me, as someone with a history of acid reflux and GERD, raw foods helps me digest my food so things are going down and they're not feeling like they're stuck up here or like acid is coming back up which is very uncomfortable also bad for the teeth and i'm pretty sure at some point i may go into some oral health education i had a friend way back when i first started my coaching who was really encouraging me on that path because i have had such a journey with my teeth <laughs> my entire life. If my grandma's whole health thing was her type 2 diabetes, I've had a number of health stuff come up and my teeth is probably like the biggest and most annoying of them all. But yeah, so that's it for today's episode. I would love to know from you in the comments your thoughts on raw foods and regularity and smooth bowel movements. If you have any experience with this, please do share in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. And feel free to shoot me an email too if you'd love to talk more about this. Next week, we're gonna talk about the top 10 raw foods to promote healthy digestion. So until next time, see you later.